Alrighty, you jewelry party animals out there. This is uh, the process that I'm currently working on. I poured this and then I kind of rolled it till I got it kind of squarish. And then I got my big hammer that I got at the Segunda for 50 cents. And I just beat the beans out of it. Wham, bam, bam, bam. Wham, bam, bam, bam. And my goal is to do a hinge in the middle. This is going to hinge, and then this is gonna be the ends that are gonna be back here. And then I'm gonna make these as round as possible, probably thin this out a little bit. And then I'm go my goal is to create some kind of slide tube, a tube that'll go over and it'll go left and right. And then I'm going to have a, a little dowel that's gonna stick and then there's gonna be a some kind of where the tube goes over and then turns to lock in and it's gonna slide back and forth to close it. So the hinge is gonna be on the top that's going to be the centerpiece. So I'm gonna make my own hinge um, out of sh out of uh, some rolled silver and the hinge is going to be like the center piece as, as opposed to having a stone there the hinge is going to be I'm going to do like a ridiculously big hinge and then we're going to do this slide clasp idea with a tube on the back side so that's where we're at right here friends I kind of went a little bit in on this with the rolling mill and then I think I'm done with the rolling mill at this point. I'm just gonna hammer this until it gets just a little bit longer, a little bit thinner, because I'm not sure how thick that is, if I'm gonna be able to bend that. You know how it is out here in these main streets, guys. Bending a big, thick chunk of silver like that, I think it's possible, but all I have is a wooden uh, wrist mandrel, uh, bracelet mandrel, and I don't know if this is gonna probably give me much action if I beat it. Maybe if I anneal it, so I'm guessing I need to thin this up a little bit before I do that. But there's more than one way to skin a cat, friends. And I think this is thick enough where I want it to be any... I don't want it to be any thinner than that. So I want thick here. And I'll probably work some time to thin this out. This uh, length of this is just under 7 inches. And uh, I think a typical lady wrist... And I think this will be for a lady. Is... Um, about I think about six inches six and a half inches I don't want for it to fit too tight so I want for it to be a little I think that's a good size and I don't know how I'm going to embed the the dowel to fit in there but I'm going to figure that out I might drill a hole and then put a piece of wire thick wire I'll probably use maybe like a piece of wire that I rolled myself I want this all to be handmade from the ingot to this point I don't want to use sheet I don't want to use a uh, wire that I bought from Rio I want to do everything old school so uh, I'm getting close guys so I was pounding this a little bit and maybe I'll take you over there just so you can see how I did it because I did it on the grass I put this on the grass and I just put my headphones on and just beat the beans out of it because this is not good to pound on this is where I'm at you guys know what my, my idea is hinge in the middle tube slide clasp that I've never made before on the back. Um, I'm just going to get this kind of ready for that process. Um, I'll bend it before I put this, the hinge on because I think once I get that hinge on and I start needing to pound on this, that hinge is going to, I might slip and bend and hit, slip with my hammer and hit the hinge and ruin the hinge. So I'm going to get everything bent and then put the hinge on last. All right, guys, jewelry adventure. Let's keep leaning toward moving forward, make our dreams come true. You know how we do. All right, muchachos, we are here. I have my, uh, I bought these online, Liberation Files. I have a bunch of them. And I'm really trying to take some material off and get this nice and round. I'm going to do the same thing with this piece right here. So I'm going to start forming and forming the silver now. I have my uh, tray that I keep between my feet. 
to catch the sawdust that I will use later for texturing and for other application, artistic applications. My ultimate goal is really to get these close to similar in size. I'm gonna take a little bit of material off of this guy. Let's look at our length, because I did pound it. I didn't measure it after I pounded it some more. Almost, yeah, just over six and a half. And then we have to think there's gonna be a gap here for a big hinge in the middle. So we're close to seven. And so I'm gonna spend some time filing. It's kind of boring. I'm sure you don't want to watch it all, but uh, yeah. Alrighty, one of Roseville, here we are. I rolled this out of a little piece of nug off some little scraps that I had that from the last time I poured, my pour was kind of messy. So I took a little piece of droppage and then rolled it into this weird piece. All I really need is an area. So I'm just gonna kind of free freehand this. And I'm thinking, let's just kind of see what kind of rectangle I can make. Go a little skinnier right here and go down more maybe. Work. I think this this uh, right here is going to be it. Too. I was just kind of freestyling. See how wide does this need to be? Because this is kind of thin. I th I'm guessing, friends, this is probably about 24 gauge. Maybe a little thicker than 24 gauge in my experience. Yeah, it's thicker than 24 gauge. This might be like 22 gauge. Go ahead and take. And this will be the direction. That way we have plenty of space to roll. And then we're going to turn this into a into a uh, tube. Okay, friends, I have my little dapping block here that I bought on Amazon. This is a great tool and I've used it quite a bit more than I thought I was going to because it's great for me making hinges, making tubes, big, small. I haven't used the V yet. This little V action. I got a square action here. I haven't used that yet, but uh, this is just has like a lot of possibilities. So here I'm going to look at, this is, seems like it might be big enough. How about this one? Let's start here. Grabbing one of my little uh, dapping punches and using the cylinder of it. So I kind of want a cylinder that's about the size of this, but maybe a little bigger so that we have some play because it, it does taper. And I'm going to try to create a tube. I'm sure there's people out there that are saying you're doing it wrong, but this is, I'm too dumb to know any other way. So on this side, I can just kind of, instead of hammering it here, I can hammer here. Just keep working this tube. Again, I feel like this is 22, not 24. It's not perfect, but now we're kind of closer to where we want to be. And shape this up a little bit better, but I think this is a good width. Probably wish I would have put the notch in it earlier, but I have tools. I have tools. Okay, amigos, this is where we are right now. This, so we're gonna go small side here. This will clear. This will go and then turn like a half turn to close it. Boom, turn. The nub will be right at the end. Boom, turn, locked. Circle will be bent over and then the, the, the hinge will be right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten this and get this, the, this ends right here ready for a big fat hinge. And that'll be the second tube that we make. And for the hinge, I don't know. I may have to use another, maybe roll this out cut that and then roll that into a tube. I think that'll be big enough. Oh yeah, that'll be big enough. Well, I'll kind of take you along with the, my rolling process of doing that. Um, it's not real enjoy. It's not real exciting, but I think that's something that you guys might want to watch. So I'm going to file these nice and flat and then get them ready for a tube. 
So you can see where, whenever I rolled the metal, how it was all mashed. So this is gonna come off. Boom. Because it was all mashed whenever I was trying to make it into a, from the ingot. Sometimes that happens um, when you're, you're forcing it to do what you want it to do. You can see in here there's some, the ruggedness of me just mashing it down. I like that. And I want to keep it if possible. I don't know what the end project, product will be. But uh, if I can, whatever ruggedness I can keep of it, I will. All right, friends, we are here. I have this piece of ingot mistake that I uh, made an error with. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to roll this. In. Uh, I only have square, square shape on my rolling mill. So I'm going to uh, make it square first and then a good grip on it. There we go. So there's a little action, a little action. We're just going to keep rolling this and we'll do this for a while. Okay, so you guys can see where it's starting to square up a little bit. So I'm just going to keep doing that and then I'll bring you guys back and you guys will see the progress. All right, friends, this is where we're at, man. Look at that. That's kind of squarish. I did hit it with my uh, hammer to kind of just flatten it because it was starting to warp a little bit. I like having this here so that I could grip it with my pliers. Bam, 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 bam. I'm going to hit this until I get it nice and round. Um, but I'm going to nail it first. So the tube around this hinge wire is going to be huge. So it's going to be a big center piece because the hinge is the middle piece we want to make it saucy we want to make it stand out make it strong make it bold so it's going to be like a monster hinge Woo, buddy let's have some fun Whew, a little bit of a workout guys a little bit of a workout right here we got it nice and roundy i will go through with my file and just kind of fine tune it and then cut this off this is long enough after I anneal it to be able to put it in a hinge and then still be able to smash down, kind of rivet the ends so that they stay in the hinge. But <clears throat> this is gonna be pretty bossy, dude. We're gonna try to do a good, nice tube for our hinge. Just do a little bit better job than we did on the last one. Tube time. Feels like possibly twenty four gauge. Okay, we got plenty. Let's try it again, just for double measure. Double the measurement, yeah. Okay, we're about right here. And then for the diameter, or for the the width of the metal, and to make sure that it's gonna go all the way around, we're gonna add about three millimeters to it. A little longer than shorter. By about a mil two millimeters, maybe. This doesn't need to be this long because it's going to be both on both sides in about two millimeters, but I'm going to make it better to have more material than not enough, friends. And you know how we do it, guys. In fact, I think let's give myself a little bit of a fighting chance here. Let's give ourselves a little bit of a fight, fighting chance by pre-bending this a little bit just so it wants to cooperate. Give this a little pre-bend. Hopefully it'll be nice to us if we give, give it one of those numbers. Okay, we got it right there. Let's just go with the mallet. Hell 
it might almost be there, guys. Let's take a look. I'm just gonna kind of pretend like this is, that's gonna be a little big. So while I still have it open, I'm gonna go ahead and trim a little piece of this. What do you guys think? That's probably about one millimeter, but that's a pretty good cut if you guys see that. More material than not enough, guys. Let's, let's kind of, I could always use my mandrel, my little tools to make this round again if this gets unround. Okay, so. Okay, guys, I think that might, that one millimeter might've been nice. That is a nice hinge. Look at that, guys. I think we're close. We're gonna close this up. I'm gonna file this, kind of clean this up. You can give it a little bit of the Andrew Berry bend, guys, where it's kind of an oval, so that those that seam connects nice. And I think we have a nice. Let's see if you guys can see inside that tube. You can see any a little bit of light through it. Maybe I'll get my tweezers, and as it, the solder runs, I'll give it a little pinch. Let's, let's see if we can pull this off. All right, friends, right here. Here's the Andrew Berry kind of oval bend. I sanded just like the face of it where I want the solder to kind of, but I'm gonna put the solder, I'm gonna put the solder on the inside. So give it a little, you guys with me? Give it a little drop of flux to travel down that seam. I'm going to heat the flux so that when I place my solder in there, it doesn't go where I don't want to go because I'm going to place my solder right on that seam. Little squeeze as I heat. Okay. Turn that fire off. Pieces of solder, kind of the strip shaped ones. I'm gonna use my solder pick and just push it. Oops, all the way through, actually. I'm gonna go a little bit, kind of a medium high heat. Number three, acetylene torch, number three head. Got my tweezers ready. I'm looking down the tube, you guys can't see. Looking down the tube, okay, that ran, that ran, and it ran all the way through, nice and solid, guys. Gave it a little bit of a pinch at the bottom, bottom end, but I don't think it was necessary. Let's take a look. It's kind of hard to tell right there, but you can see we got a solid fusation station, friends. All right, this is where we're at, guys. A little bit of uh, grummy right there. But we got a solid line all the, way, all the way across. So we're gonna go ahead and shape this back into a circle again and then start, or back into a tube. This is my little nail punch that I use for rivets. And I just kind of massage it. Get it kind of roundy again. You guys with me? Now, since we're here, let's see. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now, now, mind you, this is going to be quite a bit shorter because the hinge is going to fit only within the range of here. So I'm going to chop at least that much off. Let me just show you guys. And let's say that we cut that. I will probably do the ends this big and the middle one that big. Can you guys see that? So the middle one wider. Let's drop that base. Did you guys like bass when you were young? Did you like cars with bass? All right, guys, so we have that. Wish I would have left a little more. Yeah, we got this. So that I'm equal to both sides. Put a little mark there just so I can really see it. Guys, I have had so much 
so much of a so much challenge cutting through this little piece of my other one was all crooked and I'm wondering if I might, I might have to remake this guys even though I did such a good job it's significantly better I can clean that oh hell no it wasn't significantly better it was the same the same whack if you guys can see those they're a little whack in their straightness. Dude, I don't think that's going to work. As I place these, now look how whack that is, guys. Dude, that stinks. Dude, this is horrible. I don't even know if it's salvageable, guys. I might have to redo it. Dude, that stinks. Okay, what I do wrong? What I do wrong? Dang. Okay, I need to think. I need to figure out a bit a jig or a tool, a a tube cutting tool. When you're doing little tiny pieces of tube, it's not that big of a deal. But when you're doing a big tube, it is so it is not easy to make it straight, guys. Please put in the comments what you guys would do, or if there's a tool out there, or what it's called. Because if I struggled with that, I'm sure somebody else out there is going to struggle with that. Pretty janky. I'll try to clean it. I know this side's a little skinnier. So I have a little bit of... And if I make this side match this side with shaving it off a little bit, I might be able to salvage this. All right, you cycle jewelry fanatics out there. Whew. Man, I worked on this and I think I got pretty close my people out there, look at that. I think we can make that work. I want the bottom of the bracelet to be flat. So I'm gonna put this, the hinge is gonna sit on top. Um, you can do hinges that go like this, or you can do hinges that go down here. So I may have to file in a slope so that the slope has good contact with the, with the hinge, with the hinge. Because I don't want this to be like this, or else this is going to be on the the skin side of the of the bracelet. It's going to be uncomfortable. So we want it to sit as flat as possible. So I'm going to bend these first, and then based on what that bend looks like, then I'll I'll file the the slopes. I may anneal this one more time before I start bending because I don't. I think they're a little work hardened from pounding and then filing. So I'm going to take this out to my big hammer. I'm just going to beat the beans out of it. I'm not going to be too shy about it because I I'm, I want to maintain this rugged look. I don't want for it to be too shiny. I want for it to be rugged and just rugged. Yeah. This is where we are, guys. I bent this outside on the grass using... I know it's a pretty far-fetched idea. I know it's a crazy wild idea, guys, but, <laughs> you know, it's like, if, if I don't do it, I'll, who will? I'm going to file these edges a little bit, if I can, like that, so that this hinge, these hinges can fit right on there very nicely, because they're going to fit on top, like I discussed, for comfort. Um, I'm also going to think about this little mushroom head thing and how I'm going to fit this in here. And how I might need to bore this out a little bit deeper so I can get that really in there and throw some hard solder in there. So I knew that if I if I if I put this in first and then started beating it, this is gonna get all bent out of shape. So I'm I'm really taking into, into consideration the order of operations. Alrighty, I bored this out right here. Mushroom. Now, I don't know if that's too tall, but I could always file it down later. So let's kind of see if we can. So this right here will be something like this. All right, outlaws, here we are, guys. I have this kind of propped up with my third hand. I have the hinge pretty smooth to the back of it. Oh drop right there and then I drop right here 
I ain't holding back, friends. I ain't holding back. So we're gonna go right here. Let me get this nice and all kind of feeling like it wants to be friends. The, the bigger mass needs to be heated first because it's gonna take a lot more heat to get it to the temperature that we require for solder to melt. We don't wanna focus concentration on the smaller mass. In this case would be the tube. We're gonna focus, focus our heat on the big piece. If I can put the heat right here and I can see this piece of uh, solder start to respond, which it is right now, I know we're getting close. Okay, boom. That went all the way, nice. Okay, now let's focus up here. We're gonna focus behind the nub. The solder's on this side. I want the solder to go towards the heat. Oh shoot, no, nope. yes. It did go in there, friends, but it also made a mess. And it's sometimes the, the game we play, friends. Uh, easy cleanup, I can clean that up pretty easy. I wish I didn't do that, but uh, I'm not a professional. I just only play one on TV or on the internet. Okay, heathens, this is where we are. I have some space on this side, space on this side for these side rings that are gonna go on the other, on the other side, which will be this side. So here I filed nice and flat. All right, guys, this is a very delicate procedure. It finally, after some time of wrestling with it, I finally got it where I wanted. Okay, so now I have the balls on there and I'm just going to focus the heat right here on the mass and wait for the solder to respond. And when it does, then I'll give it a little kind of mush maybe with my tweezers and right. There we go, we got some action over here. And make sure it really wants to get into this bracelet. The solder will follow the heat. Okay, I think I feel good about that. I think I feel okay. All right, no heart attack. Feeling good like we should, baby. Let's roll. That's not pleased. Okay, we have. We not we might not get first place at the beauty contest, but we're in the contest. At least we're there. All right, guys. So uh, I'm on this side of the shop. I'm gonna cut my first notch. Okay, we have a, a little of a groove. All right, friends, I may have to face defeat, guys. I don't think this is going to work. So I got this right here. The slide will go onto that. And then it's supposed to go in like that. And then turn. But even when it's turned, look, it's still going to fall open. Oh, buddies, what do you guys think? Still a cool design with the hinge in the top. Maybe I get rid of this tube and I put a latch. I think if I can get both of these kind of flat and get these a little bit kind of looking the same, even if I have to make this one skinnier to match this. So it just aesthetically looks better. So my original idea is not going to work, guys. But that's why we do these adventures is so we can learn is is this idea gonna work almost always they do and i think it's still gonna work it's just gonna work in a different way way so i'm gonna take a break get some shut eye maybe dream about this but yeah they don't know the ideas don't always work but this is going to be one ba bracelet when it's done believe that 
All right, guys, I'll catch you guys in the morning. All right, back at it, friends. This is where I'm at. Uh, I decided that that tube idea is not going to work for me, so I am going to set this hinge, and then I'm going to probably put a, a mushroom head on the end of this, and then I'm going to put one of my wires, one of these wires. We're going to try that. Setting the uh, hinge pin is very similar to a small hinge pin. Basically, I just cross hatch. Just be patient with it, and then slowly it'll start to mushroom the ends so it doesn't want to come out. I'm just going to keep doing this for a while. It's kind of boring, but uh, I'll bring you guys back. All right, friends. I did get this... Uh... <clears throat> Hammered in pretty good, man. What do you think? Not too bad. Open and close. So I was thinking about putting a little tube. I have this tube that I've created right here. And I was going to put it right there, but I, a small piece of it. But I, And this groove right here, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to put the seam down, put some solder in there. I'm going to probably wedge this a little bit more. All right, Juanitosville, look how close we are, guys. We got that looking like a like a, like it belongs, doesn't it? And the ruggedness, look at that. There's even a crack right in there. And guys, I don't know. This is really cool. I'm gonna keep this as rugged as I can, but it's still shiny in the high points. You'll see. I don't know how it's gonna look out, how it's gonna look at the end, but. That's why you're here on the adventure, friends. All right, you silly health nuts. Let's go right here, guys. We are we are going to put a little drop of flux. Medium solder. I'm going medium solder, guys. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to fill this little channel with solder. And once the solder melts into the channel, then I know that we're at temperature that I can actually pick this up and place it. And I believe in myself. I'm waiting for that solder to respond. I'm, I want to get some kind of... Okay, okay, I think we're getting close, guys. I might help it fill that little gap in there. There it is. It's responding. Okay. Okay. I want that to stay close to that temperature. Oh, jeez. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let that cool off and then I'll bring you back. Okay, I have a half sphere right there. I sanded it down with some pretty greedy sandpaper. Uh, put a piece of flux right on there. I'm gonna use a medium solder right here, friends. Cook that flux off. Grab one of our little pallions. Put it right on top. Okay, that looks good. Now we're back over here to this side. Guys, if you guys can see the way I'm holding my torch, I hold it, I'm holding it like this, and then I'm using this to be able to, you know what I'm saying? And I don't normally hold it like that, but I just kind of discovered it just today, actually. <laughs> That's kind of nice. I can up and down because normally I have to put my solder down and then go like this and go like this. But now with my new discovered technique, kind of gives you a little extra stability too. Because you don't want this torch getting away from you, friends. I've had some nightmares. I haven't had any close calls, knock on wood. But uh, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to play. Just take a look at that. Yeah, let's go with it. 
that nub is drilled into the base into the bracelet so it is quite a heat sink and I really want to get a good solid solder bond which I did just right then boom so I think we're good I can I'm, I, I can sculpt being part of being a silversmith guys is also being a silver sculptor we are sculpting the silver and making it to bend to our desire all right guys i have this uh, wire that i created it was square a little bit thicker on this side but i just rolled it through my rolling mill to make it just thin enough all right i just annealed it and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and cut it i don't know the best way to make this in a cute bend nice bend the other one is going to be a little bit more, more difficult like that better than just doing it by hand which i have done in the past okay guys so we're here kind of give it a little bit of a bend right here just with my thumb just like that it's annealed so it's going to bend see how it kind of wants to go with the then I'll just give it a little cross. But that's enough of a shroom, mushroom head right there to hold that. I think what I'm going to do is trim this. I think what I want to do is melt this to a ball. And then once I get this melted to a ball, I'll form this. I'll start filing this and get everything like so it's copacetic. Alrighty, Juanitosville. This is where we are, guys. Let's take a quick look tour of this finished piece basically finished guys uh i put the wire in here the secret is to pinch just fine tune pinch this a little bit maybe get your uh pliers and pinch the end make sure this is sanded and uh the nub is sanded so that you can so the it'll glide i had a little bit of an issue because my wire was is square kind of squarey so i kind of had a file in there a little bit to and sand I'm not, and, and i haven't even started cleaning yet guys um i gave it a little bit of a up bend right there so that the person that owns this can just like click it open open boom closed it's gonna need a little bit of fine tuning i could probably pinch this end a little bit so that that holds closer but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much, guys, for hanging out. Um, sorry I sound like this. I haven't been making very much videos lately, lately guys, because I've been kind of ill. Been recovering, and it's just, you know how it is, guys. But uh, I'm back. I sound like garbage, but I feel great. And uh, I'll be... I'll be back 100%, guys. I um, hope you guys are staying healthy out there. Always making your dreams come true, leaning toward, moving forward. Uh, hanging on like a hubcap in the fast lane sometimes. That's how I've been feeling the past few weeks. But uh, I'm hanging in there, guys. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this adventure. It's kind of a fun idea. It's very rustic looking. I want to keep it rustic looking. So I will probably do um, some cleanup, but not too much. And... Uh, you guys will see how it's going to be. So stick around for the music video debut of this piece. Guys, uh, keep making your dreams come true out there. Stay brave. Uh, you know what it is. I'm Benny. I'm out. Peace. Thank you.